Top five college football commissioners in order of their power. And what's awesome about this is Tim Brando kind of confirmed my theory here and my belief with what he said about uh, my rankings. So number five, Jim Phillips in the ACC. He's got a multi-year grant of rights that um, he thinks, like Tim Brando just said, he thinks gives him solidarity with the league. But if you look, if you're one of these big brands and you start looking around, going, "Hey, wait a minute, my rival's making four times what I am right now. This is insane, mm-hmm. or two times or three, but I mean, it might could be up to four times as much as I'm making right now. Why should I not be able to jump?" And then you get a group with you and you fight like hell to get that grant of rights changed or whatever happens, uh, you know, uh, pay out, be damned, because you've got to go chase that that paper. Yeah, I want to respond. To, I saw one comment on the chat room rolling around. I was talking about the, the TV price and all that, and, and the person pointed out that the networks are the market. They set the market. And I understand that. I'm just saying it's um, – it's just if it's the number two most popular sport in America, you've got you know certain brands. Just like it's going to be hard to tell me that I'm worth eight hundred million dollars less than the SEC. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so that's where the negotiations come into play. But I know which, to that person, I saw that and I, I acknowledge. Yes, they, you're right. They do set the markets, but hopefully you see where I'm kind of coming from as well. Um, but yes, point taken. Uh, as far as Jim Phillips, I mean, what do you think this guy's thinking right now? I mean, I mean geez, Louise. And the other thing is, not only is he he's stressed out thinking, he's saying things like, "Well, college football's never been this. It's never been about this." Yeah. Okay, maybe it hasn't. No, he's saying like the message not. from ten years ago yeah. at the latest press conference, while the other guys with a little bit more power and definitely more uh, flexibility are saying the complete opposite. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's going the wrong direction. Um, and their contract, I mean, Mac Rhodes. He's not the end-all, be-all, but he is like a a point for us to kind of, you know, play off of. And he said yesterday, I asked him, you know, is the, would you rather be the Pac-12, for example, who has this exodus that's, you know, there's not even enough time to turn around and add teams before you have a TV deal. Like the Big 12 had it happen last summer. They still got like two more summers before they have to go to the table. So they're good. Like, I mean, they can kind of just let this thing play out. The Pac-12 loses everything it feels like and turns right around and goes into tv negotiations but mac did say the acc at least has some stability like it might not be the money that you want but the length of it at least says like hey we're in a network we're going to be in a network but yeah like how he makes up for that money part of it um that's going to determine what the acc looks like you know by the end of that contract or even if they reach the end of that contract but it's not an enviable position outside of just having that stability of a contract but it's not even a favorable one anymore. No. Number four, George Klyovkov. Uh, look, I know his conference is, is on the ropes right now, and there's a lot of things, but at least he is acknowledging the future of the sport and that he is willing to be flexible to ensure the survival of that conference as where Jim Phillips comparatively is just being like, well, you got a 13-year grand rats. What are you going to do? Like, yeah. you know, Notre Dame, please join us, but otherwise, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. and that's not really being an advocate for your teams and trying to make your conference better. It's just being like, yeah, well, you know, we did this a couple of years ago and now we're here. So there may or may not have been a tweet about George Klyovkov from somebody in the West Coast media talking about him kicking ass like two weeks ago. Right. <laughs> did y'all see that? Mm-hmm. He has not been kicking ass unless he's got some big surprises announced for tomorrow. Um, he might. He might pop something. He tomorrow. might. Good hey, for if, him and if, if he, he does, does then, yeah. hey, good for him. That George Klyovkov, the ass kicker. But I mean, that's definitely not what's been happening here lately. So if he does, then he's, he's in that same band of Sankey and Warren and just, you know, thieves in the night kind of deal. And I, I'd give him props for that. But. I am really curious to see what that press conference is like tomorrow. I mean, he is more of the new school way of thinking, but, uh, but yeah, they're in a world of trouble, it appears right now. Number three, Brett Yormark. I think we misspelled it there, but that's fine. Uh, uh, that might have been my fault on the autocorrect. But Brett Yormark in the Big 12, this guy's been in the job for less than a month, and he's already number three because of what's going on in those other two leagues. That, I think, illustrates where the Big 12 is actually in a power position where I know a lot of people don't say that, but he's not reeling from a loss anymore. They are already have you know patched that wound and are moving forward and trying to be more aggressive so that it doesn't happen to them again, which makes him uh, more more powerful than the than the two below him. And we know who the top two are going to be, but we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, if I'm Brett Yormark, I'm feeling pretty good about where I am already starting my job less than a month in. 
Yeah, I would just say the only thing is, is I would be watching my freaking back. Oh, yeah. Um, because I don't trust for a single second that Baylor or Texas Tech or Kansas State or whoever, and I know some of those are unrealistic and, you know, they're not going to end up in the Big Ten or whatever, but I, I would not leave anything off the table. I'd be watching for KU to be bolting to the pack. Like, I, <laughs> I'd be – radars up on every single move possible now it's obviously way harder to do in the big 12 because of the you know the exit fees and all that which is why oklahoma and texas are still around but you know that contract still does run out here in the next couple years so um yeah i think he definitely landed in a better position than it could have been i definitely think there's a lot of momentum and there's some good things on the horizon potentially for the big 12 and and he's a unique guy who i'm really curious to see kind of how he navigates all that but i i'm just saying i would I'd be watching my back. Uh, I wouldn't trust anybody at this stage. I think you have not heard anything from him since Big 12 media Nothing. days. Today, and I think that's awesome. I think that's good because he's busy. He's got things he's got to yeah. do. Number two, Kevin Warren. Uh, this guy went from, uh, you know, kind of like people thought of him to like he was just dropping dropping hits the other day like a Jay-Z concert. Yeah, I'm a favor of expanding the playoff. Yeah, I've softened my stance on this. Yeah, the TV deal is going to be huge and it's not done yet. Yeah, I'm open to more expansion. Bam, banger, 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 right there. Uh, all right in a row. And all of a sudden you start thinking like, wow. Maybe, maybe like Craig said earlier in the show, maybe you don't judge the guy in his first year. Maybe in maybe the COVID, COVID, year, in the no COVID year where nothing made sense yeah, to anyone dug, on, the, on what, the planet. What if we would have judged Dave Aranda as a head coach his first year? Yeah, no, I mean, Warren's uh, definitely done, uh, you know, a, I don't know if it would be a 180, uh, but he's definitely, you know, changed the the perception, uh, certainly of, of not only him as a, a big power broker in college football, uh, and, and obviously for just the, the you know, the, the casuals, like, uh, I mean, it's the casual person who doesn't work with him or hasn't, you know, done deals with him in the past or whatever. Those guys all knew what to expect, I'm sure. But, yeah, I mean, he came out swinging. Uh, that L.A. move was just massive and completely unforeseen and um he's letting it be known that you know he's in charge and they're gonna be as large as they want to be and uh what that entails like that's the mystery that there's a little strength in their in their back pocket is is that no one quite knows what their next move could be but they're they're i mean they're right there at the top and he's done a, a great job in turning around the you know the perception in, in a short amount of time and number one greg sankey why is this because i say so greg sankey that's what he can do. You know what? I've got this idea. What are you going to do about it? And, like, he almost sometimes comes across to me as a bit of a bully. Like, well, I don't know if that's good. And he's like, shut up, nerd. Uh, this is what we're doing. Like, he, he'll shove you in your locker and take your lunch money. Uh, and that's what the SEC has been doing. And here's the thing. He's the most powerful commissioner. And the guy I just mentioned, his conference is going to make more money. Yeah. But Greg Sankey is really just the power broker. And... Uh, I it's it's kind of amazing to me and how they've built this on look the SEC is a great conference but so much more of it is perception than reality. It's been twenty years of ESPN yeah. machinery is yeah. what it's been. I mean and and but also winning a bunch of titles while all that was going on. If they Auburn did. and LSU and uh, Alabama and all Florida, those schools, Florida don't Auburn. win titles and it doesn't you know it doesn't translate. But the fact that you had this massive media push and he also had a bunch of teams not just one or two but like a handful of teams winning heisman and titles i mean it's just the here's here's the wood dry wood here's the matches here's the gasoline boom sec is is where they are yeah when you All have right. state television <laughs> that's no, what, yeah. what they are uh, that's a good point uh from uh one of the chat kevin threw down the gauntlet and said who